pass my greetings to your home church and your family. I would like to send my greetings to you. Thank you for your prayers and we thank you for your support. Hello to the uh, home church in California. Uh, greetings from Vanuatu. I'm from an Irish man in Vanuatu. So thank you very much for your blessings and prayers for all the work. Our Goodwill missions trip to the land down under and the beautiful but uh, rural South Pacific Island Vanuatu was an amazing blessing. I wanted to take this opportunity to give a more full uh, report and then uh, let you hear a, an amazing story about uh, what God did in uh, a certain village and how the power of God overcame the power of demons in a witch doctor. As we um, came to Australia, uh, we were had expectations of what this country might be like, but um, from a spiritual perspective, um, we uh, found it to be a country that was in desperate need of sound biblical teaching. Uh, the church there, Fellowship Baptist Church uh, in Brisbane, uh, pastored by Brother um, Bramblett, was, uh, is, is a strong church. Uh, and yet the people seemed very hungry to hear biblical teaching on marriage and the home. And um, it was a delight to meet uh, several pastors there at the Saturday Bible conference, marriage conference, and then uh, preach the morning service and then the evening service as well. We also had a great time of fellowship, uh, had uh, a lunch there, and uh, loved their little party pies, as they call them, just kind of mini meat pies. Met wonderful young people, and um, the uh, the diverse uh, congregation there, uh, several families of uh, aboriginal background and um, uh, also uh, there's a strong group of lebanese uh, in australia and uh, so god uh, just knit our hearts with them we did get a chance to uh, do a few little fun things uh, Pauline and i went to the australian zoo and uh, got to look at all kinds of animals feed kangaroos get to pet a koala uh, there not a koala bear we were told but uh, koalas asleep for about 22 hours a day they told us because they only thing they eat is um, the uh, eucalyptus leaves so not a lot of protein uh, just a, a great time then um, through brother Bramlett's um, um, reference we uh, were able to uh, meet a new missionary and felt like uh, the Lord wanted us to do this and so we flew to the very rural uh, beautiful island of Vanuatu it was a long trip uh, getting anywhere in Australia takes so long <laughs> Vanuatu um, has uh, uh, quite a few islands but um, I frankly had never heard of Vanuatu uh, I had heard uh, and found out that it was the same as New Hebrides uh, the famous missionary John Patton has uh, a Presbyterian missionary uh, who uh, encountered cannibals and headhunters and uh, others, uh, has a wonderful uh, missions story, and he did bring the gospel to those precious people. And that's all I knew, but uh, it has been. In, it was a formerly a, a French and English colony, and still they have French schools there, uh, but they were in, have been independent for about 50 years. Uh, since about 1980. It's not a large nation, about 250,000, but uh, although it has a Christian background, um, it um, does not, it is a confused group of people because the Anglicans, which is one of the main groups there, is uh, many of them aren't really born again. They just have a very uh, formal religion. Uh, the Presbyterians, a little better situation there, but uh, not just hardly any group that really is preaching the gospel. And for sure, almost nobody is uh, really teaching Bible-based uh, living. Uh, and huge uh, confusion with all the witch doctors. But uh, Brother Panero and uh, Liz there with their four 
beautiful daughters are doing a great work. He's an unusual missionary in that his first language was French, uh, was raised in New Caledonia, another island there. Uh, he's a missionary kid. Uh, then spent, he's actually a citizen of Australia, so he talks like English like an Aussie. But uh, since the time of being a teenager, he grew up in Vanuatu. His father started a ministry there and now is uh, no longer uh, in the ministry. But um, so he grew up uh, knowing this uh, Islamic language, uh, which is kind of a, a pidgin English and a lot of interesting words like um, thank you very much is thank you Tomas. <laughs> and, uh, but precious people, the, they're um, the Melanesian people group, uh, the same group that uh, are like here in Papua New Guinea and several of the other um, uh, South Pacific Islands. Brother and Mrs. Panero have a ministry there, a church, Luganville Baptist, and they uh, reach the people of the little town there. And then they also have a camp ministry, beautiful campgrounds. Uh, I told Brother Jeremy, he has the number one missionary house in the world. <laughs> his, his little house that he lives in is only about uh, 25 feet or so from a beach, wow. if you can imagine. It was just such a, a thrilling time meeting the people, uh, listening to them, hearing their stories, how God saved them. One of the little girls there in the picture, uh, she, uh, I just thought it was a precious picture. Um, her friends, she, when she was, she was the eighth child in a family and um, her mother tried to abort her and as a result uh, lost her leg, but was born, was raised and got saved at the Luganville Baptist Church. And uh, the Pernero's daughter and another friend are bringing her up the beach and notice how her leg is dangling. She didn't want her little uh, prosthetic leg that her sister is holding in the picture. But I thought how precious, you know, helping people. And I think that's a good picture of what they're doing. They're helping others with the gospel. And then the highlight going up to the village, people living, really most of uh, um, Vanuatu lives like they would have lived a thousand or two thousand years ago um, in these small villages. Um, here in this village, uh, the uh, the chief or the big man, as he's called, uh, welcomes us and gives his approval to the. Uh, and this was like just in the middle of the day. They, as soon as they saw us, they gathered everybody together in a little shelter they have, kind of their church. And each village is different. Some are religious villages where they have at least a nominal religion. Uh, and some are Christian, like this one, a village. And then others are just uh, really um, uh, witch doctor villages. But uh, every village is a little different, but from 30 or 40 to several hundred live in these villages. And that's most of, you have to go way back. I mean, you just can't hardly drive there. Um, God's done a wonderful work. And I was thrilled as uh, we got to preach there. And uh, Brother Panero has been used by God to touch so many lives. And I want you to hear his story, uh, a story uh, uh, where he is uh, being uh, he, face to face with the power of the devil. And God gives uh, a great victory. Go, I've never been there before. Um, a young man we trained at Bible school had started a church out there. So we got on this boat. We take 12 of our pastors from the mountains who've never been to the jungle ever. And uh, <coughs> the rudder of the boat breaks. Massive ship. Rudder breaks. We've got like gallons of fuel and everything. And uh, they actually put the life rafts off the boat and try to push, push the nose of the boat away from the reef that we were going to get wrecked on. And uh, I actually contacted Liz. I'm like, Liz, you can pray for us because... Uh, we might be swimming tonight. <laughs> and thankfully the wind changed, praise the Lord, and uh, we did shipwreck. Three days later, same boat, they fixed the problem, hopped on it, we're on the boat for 16 hours. Um, and it was pretty rough ocean, so we finally made it to the island of Gawa. Got there, there was about 300 people that greeted us. And I um, mean, they were, they were really keen to have us visit them and we uh, preached the gospel and we had like hundreds of people get saved that week and then we got to the end of the week and we were teaching through the bible about um you know baptism by immersion and uh unbeknownst to us that the anglicans there believe that the sprinkling actually saves them so when they're a child they get sprinkled they believe they're now going to heaven because of the sprinkling and so uh there's about 14 15 people that got baptized 
they were scared to death. They were visibly scared. And it's because all their lives they've been told, if you get baptized outside of the Anglican Church, you will go to hell. And so these people were like, we're going to die. But you know what? If it's to follow Christ, we're willing to do that. So we baptized them. Nobody died, praise the Lord. And uh, then we um, were told that in order to get the boat, we had to hike to another village because the ocean was too rough. So we hiked three hours to another village, said goodbye to everyone, gave our food away, you know, gave all our yeah, different things away. We get to this village where they're about five minutes and a witch doctor greets me. He's covered in leaves, he's got this big ugly mask, you can't see his face. He's dancing around, screaming and yelling and scaring people. With this big stick he's hitting people. Runs up to me, dances in front of me, thankfully doesn't hit me. Um, all I could think of is if he touched me, I would I would knock his um, helmet off, the big mask that he was wearing. But uh, he didn't touch me, and I found out it's because culturally he's not allowed to touch men, he's not allowed to hit men, but he can hit women and children. So he's terrorizing the women and the children in this village, they're running for their lives. And uh, the chief never came greet us, everyone just hid in their huts. It was the weirdest reception we've ever had. So we're waiting for this boat, boat never came first day we have no food we asked the village for some food they said we can't give you any food so um, I, had, I had a spear gun and a mask so I went spear fishing at night we caught turtles and lobsters and all sorts of fish so that's what we ate that night next day now there's two witch doctors running around the village scaring people after death and still nobody third day now I'm I'm panicking because Liz is expecting our fourth child and I meant to go back to Australia I'm gonna miss my flight I'm not gonna make it there in time and uh, I was having a pretty bad attitude too because this boat said it was gonna pick us up and it just wasn't coming three days of only eating fish so you can imagine you can get a bit frustrated and um, on the, the, the third day the priest comes up to me at night I know where he was he was hiding in his house the whole time he shows up and says uh, we want you guys to um, to preach, to share, share with us. You know, we've been waiting for the uh, bishop. The bishop's meant to come, but because the ocean's too rough, he hasn't come yet. So, would you mind sharing to us? And I said, no, nah, no, nah, we're not going to share because um, the chief hasn't invited us into the village, and that means that if we shared and they did something to us, they'd be entitled to do that because we haven't been received by the chief yet. So, the chief comes running up, receives me into the village. And then uh, the priest says, now would you preach in our church? And I said, no, I don't really want to preach in your church because I'm not an Anglican. I'm going to say things that you're probably not going to be happy about. He said, no, no, please, please. He's almost begging me. Please, please. And so I said, okay, we'll preach in your church. So I said, go and talk to the other guys. I'm going to go fishing because we need some food and you guys haven't fed us. So I walked down to the ocean and um, I could hear the Jaws music playing in my head and I was like, I'm going to get eaten by a shark if I go spear fishing instead of preaching. So I put the spear gun down, come spear fishing later. Went up to the main church and everyone was singing songs already before gathering. Had to walk through a crowd of people outside because there's about two or three hundred people standing around. Got into the church, preached, gave a real clear gospel message. At the end gave an invitation and the priest himself was raising his hand for salvation. Never, never made a profession of faith. And so after we finish, we think, oh, wow, this is fantastic. We're done. A guy puts his fist through the window and says, what about those questions we worked on for the last three days? And what they'd been doing is they'd been sitting down every day trying to figure out questions that would trump, you know, would, would, uh, would uh, make us, you know, not be able to answer. And then they would show that the, their Anglican belief was stronger than ours. So then the room got real tense, like people are getting quiet. I'm looking at my pastors and they're like, <laughs> one of my pastors later on, he says he was, he was, he was already figuring out how he was going to jump through the window to get out of there. I'm like, what? You're, you should have suffered with us. And he's like, yes, but I have a wife and children and I still need to look <laughs> after them. <laughs> and so we, um, I told the guy, I said, well, just one second, I got to go get my, I had this big Bible that I hiked with. I said, let me go and get my Bible. So walked out as I walked out there's people standing outside with bow and arrows there's people standing outside with spears I'm like oh here we go this is how I'm gonna die and so I got my Bible came back in the only thing I could think of was 
don't say anything stupid because I'm known to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. So I'm like, don't say anything stupid. And so I started off by telling the priest, I said, whose book is this? He said, that's uh, God's book. I said, okay, good. I said, so who wrote this book? He said, God did. I said, okay. Did the Baptist church write this book? No. Uh, did you write this book? No. So who gave us this book? God. I did it about five, four, five, five or six times. The whole congregation. Whose book is this? God's book. I said, okay, good. So when you ask me a question today, I am not going to answer you on what I think. I'm going to read you a verse from God's book. So if you get upset, it's the book. And I'm thinking, you know, they're going to shoot arrows. At least you know, shoot arrows at the Bible. Don't shoot arrows at me. And so they're all like, yep, okay. Spend about 45 minutes, they'd ask a question. By God's grace, we'd, a verse would pop into my head. We'd read the verse together. We'd answer the question. Then ask another question. We'd answer another question. Question after question. And then by the end of it, the priest stands up in front of his congregation. Uh, you know, and you can imagine we've got a candle lighting the room, so it's quite dark. There's all these dark faces staring into the window. He stands up and he says, well, you've shown us tonight. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Who showed you? Sorry. God's word has shown us tonight that what we've been doing as an Anglican church is not in the Bible. So the priest says, I am almost ready to get baptized tomorrow, but I want to go back and read my books before I do. So he walks out and his people just go crazy. I mean, we've got, we got 15 guys with us who we brought from the jungle who know how to witness the people, know how to evangelize. And they spent most of the night counseling and talking with us. So, the next morning, wow, we almost got killed by another truck. The next morning, um, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are recording while driving along the road. The next morning, um, we're sitting, having our devotions. Ship still hasn't come. We ate fish that night again. We've only eaten fish, nothing but fish. So fish and coconut milk for breakfast, and then fish for lunch, and then fish for dinner. And so, um, the catechist, he's like the uh, he's like the elder of the church or the deacon. He looks after the church. He comes up, sits down with us to have our devotions. And he looks at me and he says, I know why you've been stuck here for three days. I said, okay, well, we've been stuck here for three days. He says, well, about three years ago, uh, the priest came here and was sprinkling infants and telling us that saves us. And I asked him, I said, well, then why did Jesus have to die on the cross? If sprinkling saves us. And the priest never gave me an answer. And he told me, you know, just, you know, just trust the church, trust the Holy Church. And he said, so since that day, I've been praying and I've been asking God that if, if there's another answer out there, that he would send someone here to tell us the answer. <laughs> and he said, so you've been stuck here in our village for the last three days because you had the answer. <laughs> and he's, 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 he's looking at us, he's like, so now that you, you've given, given us the answer, you, you watch the ship will be here any day. About 10 minutes later, the ship turned up. Tooting, it's all We're crying because we're excited to leave. They're crying because they don't want to see us leave. And uh, when we're on the ship, I was talking to one of my pastors from the jungle. I said, what do you think is going to happen with them? Like, I mean, there's a bunch of new believers and we've left. We haven't been able to give them anything. And uh, he kind of looked at me and said, well, he said, you know, they're God's, they're God's children. Um, you know, he'll... He'll figure something out. Well, two years later, we went to that same village, and on the outskirts of the village, a separate location, there's a brand new village with a church right in the middle of it. Because the new believers wanted to start a new church, and the priest said, "Absolutely not, absolutely not. You're not starting another village here here in this area." And so they've actually gone and started a whole new, brand spanking new village, and the church is bang smack in the middle. <laughs> and uh, last November we sent uh, a young man that had trained with me for two years. He's now pastoring that church <laughs> on the island of Gawa. So. Wow, amazing. Isn't it thrilling to see how God is working worldwide? Yes, I'm thrilled to know and that no matter where you go in, in the world, whether it be with uh, the Australians or there with the precious people of Anahuatu, or wherever we've gone. Um, we sense that 
when you become saved, we're still brothers and sisters in the Lord. And I look forward to that day, as it says in the book of Revelation, where all people of every tribe and every kindred will be worshiping the Lord. And uh, whether it's in English or whether it be in some foreign language, I have no idea, but I know this, it's going to be an awesome time. Again, thank you for your support of our Global Missions Program. Thank you for sending us as Goodwill Ambassadors. Uh, it was uh, tiring and full. I preached a lot, spoke a lot, passed out tracks everywhere to people on planes, wherever we were, and uh, talked to so many people. A, a wonderful opportunity. We love each of you. Glad to be back. And let's continue to uh, support uh, the work so that we can see uh, even greater things in the days to come.